Ricky J Play. Hi, I'm Ricky J Play, and this is my computer. I just built it recently, and I, I was kind of getting the computer gaming, and I wanted a controller to use with it because I'm used to console games. So I got this 360 controller to go with it, but I figured just all black looks cool and all, but I thought it'd be slick if I threw in some red buttons. I got some other stuff I want to throw in it too, and I wanted to share with YouTube. All right, let me show you what I'm putting in here. I got uh, two of the thumbsticks. I'm swapping those out. Both of the triggers are going to be red. I got all the buttons in red too. I'm thinking maybe might use the original B because I mean there's a very very small difference between the two like the aftermarket and the original so it almost feels like it's not worth swapping out but I don't know it really depends on how it looks with the other ones combined because this one is of the same colors of these so chances are that will stand out a little bit and I'm a little too OCD to not worry about that. I got it. The package came with uh, the home button, but I'm not going to use this because I'm actually going to swap this out for a red LED later. And this just looks dumb. So I might use that in another project later. We'll see if that works, but. For now, I've only got this going on. So yeah, like I said, both the thumb the thumbsticks are going to be swapped out, the buttons, and just the triggers. I decided not to do the uh, bumpers because I just thought, like, since I'm trying to like match it up with my computer here, like, not everything's going to be red. So mostly black with red accents. If you've never taken one of these things apart before. Uh, what you need to know is that you're going to have to remove this sticker and on your wireless controllers it's going to be right there underneath the battery pack. Mine's already taken off because I cleaned this one and I plan to swap out parts on this one too. But yeah, you're going to have to pull this off and that's going to avoid it. So if you plan on using any warranties or sending it back to Microsoft or anything, you can't anymore. You got two screws here, two screws in the middle of the part, and then two screws there, and then the one underneath the barcode to remove. So I'm going to start removing this. Just using the tiny little flat screwdriver to pry it off. Get as much of that glue off as I can. Most of this barcode appears to be scraped off anyway, so I'm going to leave it off. I apologize for the quality, but the only camera I have right now is my phone, so there it is. The security screw. The screw that says, congratulations, Microsoft no longer wants anything to do with you. I know I can't show you a whole lot, but I'm going to start with this screw here, just because it's the only middle one. And they're in there tight. There we go. First one's out. I like to lay them out in the order that I take them out. 
I don't know if it makes a difference, but just in case, I do it. It's just a small screwdriver. You can you can use any screwdriver. You don't need one like this in case you're thinking this is a special one or anything. No, it's just um, a set of ones like this, which come in handy for working on electronics because they have a lot of small screws, and you want less you want a lot of sp small screwdrivers. Start working on the middle ones. Ones up. strip for a second. Don't want to take that out of your sight. There's a very much interesting thing going on over there. And that one's out. And last one. The second to last. Which seems to be coming out a lot faster than the other ones. Excuse me, I'll grab my metal nose pliers. Get these two tiny screws out of there. Make sure you don't lose them. They might not be completely necessary considering that there's those two snaps that will never come undone within the uh, controller by itself, but d just don't lose the parts. Right there, two little silver screws. There goes. When I did it last night, it was just shot off like crazy, but this one didn't. All right, so that's just the front shell. This is what the PCB looks like. The buns will all fall down because, well, the faceplate's not on, but. What you got here is actually two parts, the bumpers there, and that middle part, two separate things. To break them apart, you have to come to the center here, and there's just two little tabs holding it on, so it's not hard to break off, or it's not hard to take off of it. Just be very careful, because it's very thin. The buns all just kind of sit in here. So, make sure you remember which order they're in. Actually, it doesn't matter because you see those tabs there. They make it so that they only fit into a certain slot in the faceplate so that you can't mix them up. And the home button has a little thing around it for the lights and that part just pops right off the stern select button or just these tiny little pegs those ones get lost 
those ones get lost the easiest. So, oh, and these things pop right off. It's just a little, uh, little hole, kind of ovalish. It only fits over this thing a certain direction, so don't be too worried when you put those back on. Let's take you all the way inside. There's something here that's making it pretty difficult to pull out. Gonna take this rubber thing out really quick. Like I said last night, I opened up a wireless controller so it's a little different because I have to to get the triggers out you can have to slam up that way but this thing's here and it's probably to prevent me from doing that but I'm going to you can't stop me Microsoft just push the triggers in Left up, grab your testicles, and slide it forward, and there you have it. So now that I have this thing fully deconstructed, I bought it off eBay, and when it arrived it was a little gross, so I'm going to take the time to clean it, and I'll try to make it go by quick, if not I'll either time lapse it or take it off the video entirely, but for now, this thing's going to get wiped down inside and out. And what I use for cleaning up any type of video game equipment or what, what have you is um, some type of disinfecting wipe for cleaning over a large surface like, say, the outer shell like this. Messing on my spruce gear. And uh it's good for cleaning the crud off of what it, what's what builds up on the outside and stuff. Q tips, which is pretty obvious I'm sure, because Q tips are good for cleaning everything. And from what I hear you want isopropyl alcohol and the highest proof you can get looks like I got 70 proof here but I just wanted a smaller bottle and this is the smallest I could get but yeah you probably won't you probably want something like 91 proof or whatever it gets up to and here where the triggers stick out a lot of dust builds up too this is how I like to clean everything like Anything that you can take apart to some degree, I'll clean it like that, like, unless it's, like, something you don't want to take apart yourself, but I'll clean my guitars this way, like, take off all the pick guards, and if, while well, I'm taking out the strings, usually, that's when I do it, get underneath as much as possible, make it sparkly and pretty. you're still with me gotta make sure you get in all those little posts look for where dust builds up and go for that all right this one is good move on to the, move on to the face plate Start on the edge and work our way inside.
Now, inside the buns is where you're going to want the Q-tips the most. Inside the D-pad area too. You ain't got your, both the sticks right. Alright. All that's left is the buttons. Since I got this still, it's not too dried up yet. It's kind of save my alcohol. Compulsively clean every nook and cranny I can. It's not too bad in there. This controller is not in bad shape. It was. Bumpers that look bad, but we'll get to those. Inside these ones, they're usually the worst. I replaced the thumbstick on my 64 controllers, and the face buttons were just nasty like built up gunk, straight up gunk. Yeah. If I ever get another 64 controller, I'll do another video for that. But for now, all mine are good. And this half of the 360 controller is good too. <laughs> now, here's what I was talking about. There's two little tabs here that are holding it on, so you just gotta bump it up this part. Slowly push from both sides and it comes right off. And I don't know if you'll see. Yeah, you can see that all that crap's built up there. That's what I don't like. I like my shit clean. And this shit's stubborn. What the hell is this? It looks like somebody vomited on it. Oh god. Good thing this is disinfecting. Jeez. Gross. Clean up the letters too. That looks good. Set this aside. Get the emblem part that goes in between the bumpers. Right by the wire. Now that it doesn't take too much pain. Just clean the outsides of this, get all the surfaces. That's cool. And uh, actually later I'm going to replace this part too. Because I found one that is a red LED that lights up, or it's got LEDs on it that light up, and I thought that would look cool if I was going to replace the home button with a red one as well. But yeah, clean all sides, especially the thumb area, because that's where your finger grease builds up. Inside, dust. In case you didn't know, electronics, they don't really like dust. So try to keep them out of your garage or your uh, under your bed or 
I don't know, in their closet, in the attic. Thing. <clears throat> Same thing with this one. inside that little crevice or a little space in between the thumb pad and the half half dome or the dome area that goes on the inside those are clean sometimes you want to clean these off but the 360 isn't too bad with the d-pads because there's so many layers between this and the outside. It's not bad. Like I said, this is on the inside, so it's not going to get to that. This side, it's going to get all all the gunk's going to build up in these corners here. So you want to. Go for those specifically. Don't just wipe over it. It's an art to cleaning things. Maybe even use your Q-tip. It's a good thing. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, yep. Now. Here's the part I didn't try. It's getting these triggers off. They're attached to this mechanism that's attached right to the PCB. And it looks like I'm gonna have to flip this over. Remember which way the cable goes. Yours is like mine. These four little bumps need to be upward. Whoops. Lost that little ring that went around the home button, but we're okay. Try to describe this as best I can to you. Got a pig here, one going in here, one on the side there. Some type of yeah, there's a pig coming out through there, so looks like I just gotta push Hold this one out. This is it going smoothly? <laughs> Okay, so what I ended up having to do here was there's this little tab held this spring in place and goes into a little slot inside the trigger itself. You gotta take that off and then you just lean it forward and slide it off of these pegs and it's that simple. Time to do it with this one, replace it with these ones. At last, we have all the triggers off. <clears throat> Now let's see. Pretty sure this is our trigger over here. Yep. So and just just this cable so I don't have too much slack. Okay. So we're gonna slide it in a little bit like how came out Put that side in first and go for the loop pig oh don't forget to put the spring back in there we go let's pop that back in to place and this should go smoothly yep yeah, that's the first one down. Now for the other trigger. I'm gonna put this spring in now. 
So. That's our first blood. Blood loop. Come on. Come on. Come on, you bitch. <laughs> How did I do the other side so easily? There we go. It's a little tricky. Okay. Don't mess up all that shit. As soon as you start turning it, push this up. Oh, shit. Trying to make a demonstration here, but springs like whatever. Just gotta push the spring so that it curves over that little peg. Once it clicks back there, you're good. Just gotta get this arm up in the air. Voila. Got both the triggers on now. Alright, this is how I'm going to do the face buttons. Got a Y here. That obviously goes up top. A's down in the bottom. E, I think the be over here. There you go. That means we got all the buttons plugged in or set in. I'm gonna drop this rubber thingy over it. I'm gonna try to transfer it over here to this half. No, oh, this is gonna be the hard part because I don't want these crumb parts of falling out. Push they pretty much out. Okay, what's not going right here? Oh, I think it's supposed to be the final. Alright, I'm going to move these down here so that they won't do that. Come on. Let's go now. Very tricky. Tricky where you can do it. Oh, come on. Okay, we're trying to stir over a little bit. Oops, Jesus. Okay, bumpers are in place. There's some reason I can't get this back together. I know how to do it. Maybe I have to start this end first. Oh. 
Oh, come on. I like to do that. I'm worried that these aftermarket parts might be too big. Which will not make me happy. Ugh, they're all falling out. I was really hoping this would go a lot smoother. I have to pop that one back on. And fix the rubber. That sounded weird. And now the bumpers. Now the rumble thing. It's a, it, oh, it's a complete debacle. Okay, yeah, you have to you know, towards the handle side first, then start to push it in. There we go. Cool. Okay. Of course, I, you might want to check to make sure before you start screwing that it's all lined up. Now you have to undo it. It's a lot easier than making it look. I'm just trying to demonstrate it at the same time. Okay. Make sure it's good and tight. Make sure you're using a Phillips. Okay, double check it, everything's good, start putting them all in. to go across like this. Give it good tension so that or give it even tension so that all the sides line up tight. Okay, one up here. This top one's going pretty easily. Almost there. Done. There it is. This is pretty good. As you can see, I got the red triggers. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to get uh, parts like this, I found them on eBay from a store called Intense Mods. Um, I'll post a link in the description to them, but yeah, that's basically all you gotta do when you're modding your 
360 controller. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, like and subscribe. I'll be posting up um, uh, playthroughs and uh, streams and more mods hopefully. Um, getting an arcade stick soon that I will be specifically modding to uh, be multi-console and that'll be fun. I'll also do a review on the stick itself when I get it. So yeah. Thanks for watching guys.